it's recording. All right, let's do this. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the IPFS core implementations weekly sync. It is October the 31st, 2019, still <laughs> chugging through. Um, Jacob has volunteered to be a note taker. Thank you very much, Jacob. Uh, that's very kind. Uh, all right, so the hackpad with all of the notes and things is here. Let me put it in the chat, 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 chat. Uh, if you have not already, please would you fill in your async uh, update? It's at the, you sh should put that at the bottom of the document. We won't go through this during the meeting, but it's for people to review asynchronously as they please and follow up if they need to. Um, all right. Checklist, continue. Uh, what have we got? So if you are here, please put your name in the attendees bit so that we know you're here for, for the record. <laughs> uh, and we will continue on with uh, the initiatives where we talk about what's, what's going on in the world of the J, uh, well, not just JS, Go and JS, uh, IPFS core implementations, cool. So, uh, first up, we have uh, upgraded release process. Uh, as I said, Stephen is out. Uh, aching brain, Alex, did you write this? These words here, actually testing third-party repos. Hooray! Actually, actually testing third-party repos. So we um, added support to this version a while ago, uh, and and we are actually now testing third-party repos in the build, every build. Um, so not just internal ones, but some third-party ones too. The, problem is that some of the third party repos we're testing, although they signed up for the ODA release tester gig, they don't actually depend on JSIPFS or the HTTP client. Some of them depend on uh, you know the IPFS DCTL instead um, and don't pass a version of it in. So it's like, well that's cool, but there's nothing there that we can swap out to test for an updated one. Um, so there's some issues further down the well, there will be when I type them in further down the document they explore that in a little more detail but fundamentally I mean we can't like it would be lovely to test um, you know uh, dependencies of dependencies but it wouldn't be lovely at all it would be madness uh, and chaos because we then don't know like what's breaking whose fault it is like what needs to be done to fix it so we shouldn't do that and instead we should ask these people to instead depend on a version because that way they guarantee that they work with that version and then we can guarantee that they will work with the version that we want it to work with um and otherwise everyone will just go nuts so that is that any questions i think that makes absolute cool. sense um i think we should uh, where people are using IPFS DCTL and not passing in a implementation of IPFS, we should definitely tell them that that is the best practice and make that front and center on the IPFS DCTL repo, which Hugo, I think you said you're already going to do. So um, we could, uh, so we could let them know that it's best practice by throwing an exception if they don't do that. <laughs> we could submit a pull request. <laughs> was more along the lines of what I was thinking, but... <laughs> it's more like, kill the problem than a hammer. Yeah, okay. Kill the, kill the problem, kill the process. Yeah, I, 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 so I, I think maybe a release of IPFS DCTL, a major, major release of it, um, and, and a informative issue or pull request to the repos in question would be a good solution, yeah. I mean, so the interesting thing is that if you, if you, if you ask for an improc daemon and you don't pass a executable version, we do throw an error, right? And the same thing if we, right? If we uh, have a, no, sorry, that was it. We do throw an error if we don't pass in an implementation. Yeah, cool. That's good. All right, uh, rad. Um, cool, so that is fun times. And that is really good because it means that our release process time to release is greatly greatly reduced because we don't have to manually do that. So that's super good news. Very happy with that. Um, okay, cool. Uh, any questions or comments on the on the upgraded release process then from anyone else? All right, let's let's move on then. Uh, upgrading tester tester testing infra and or process. Um, yeah. Uh, so I noticed 
the just so that people know that the benchmarks.ipfs.team site has gone down again and it's on my to-do list to have a look at it uh, again and fix it so it doesn't happen again just so you everyone also knows. maybe share some terms for that more broadly because i believe you are the only human who is able to help us fix that problem um, these days and so if we if we have a couple more humans who can lead maintain when you're um, unavailable that would be snazzy. I think Hugo also has the keys cool. yeah that's awesome uh, I can share it with anyone else who would like to have the keys <laughs> I right. think uh, yeah or at least putting them somewhere where folks can ask access maybe like a one password might help too okay um, cool yes I agree um, all right, uh, so then someone has put demo test ground plus docker. If you put your like GitHub handle or name before you, the thing, then I know who to ask about it. Is that you, Jim? I have a demo. I didn't put that there, but. Uh, <laughs> I put it oh, there from the previous meeting. Should, should I just show it quickly? How quick uh, is it? It's like 10 seconds. Yeah, go for it. OK. Um, so I only got this working yesterday, so I'm going to run it. Um, so it's building a Docker image with IPFS in it. It's spinning up two Docker instances on the same machine. And it's putting a file in one peer and sending it to the other peer. But it's all synchronized. And uh, it seems to receive. Yeah, it's done. So that's the demo. And it kicks out JSON. And with the JSON, we can do, we can, we can make really, get that to run on multiple machines now and uh, build arbitrarily big tests. So um, that'll be what I'll be trying to do uh, this week. They're, they're doing construction next door, so I don't know if you can hear anything I'm saying. So. I got it. At least I think I did. That's super cool. What's the next step? Um, just try to get it run on multiple machines, but there's a lot of code review. Uh, we're using roles, latest stuff. Um, and uh, he has to take a look at it, I think, like because uh, I don't even know if I'm using the APIs and things the way he intended them to be used. So, uh, but it's pretty cool stuff with the, the, the system he created. So, looking uh, forward to iterating on it. Cool. Okay. Any quick questions for Jim? All right. Uh, so Hugo has put down all interface core JS interface core tests run and pass in the browser. He's laying the tracks as I'm reading them out. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing some changes. This is all started up uh, like updating or like a bunch of repos to um, CTL um, async version. And also the, the little setup uh, that we do when we um, configure CTL and then pass that uh, CTL instance to the interface core. We do this either in JSFPFS or HTTP client, and we'll probably also, will do it in interop. And as I started looking to uh, porting all of this to async CTL, uh, I f um, found a bunch of problems, stuff that we couldn't, couldn't be sure which version was running, even if we passed like the HTTP client from JSFPFS, so we tell CTL, okay, I want you to run this version, not your own version. Uh, and stuff wasn't working at all. We couldn't be sure of which version of HTTP client and even JSFPFS was being run, this especially in the browser. And also a bunch of uh, the tests, the interface core tests were skipped because the CTL couldn't handle uh, browser to remote node communication. Uh, and I have a bunch of PRs to fix all of this. And I, I run for the first time everything. And they, they pass it's all green. I'll finish the PRs as soon as I can. And, uh, I have a description explaining everything uh, and also a big new version of CTL that it's going to be awesome. Nice. Can you post a link to the description of everything or yeah? Uh, no description yet, but I'll put a link that will have a description in the future explaining everything. Future link. 
Awesome. Uh, sounds good. Uh, so this in general means that our, our browser tests will perhaps be a lot more stable because we will know what version of IPFS they're actually using. Yeah, cool. All right, that sounds, that sounds great. Um, okay, cool. Uh, any questions for Hugo before we move on? David has a, an update on test ground. Would you like to share? Uh, I guess, I guess, <laughs> like, which of the, the lines did you copy over for this meeting, Molly? <laughs> I don't have the document open. Yeah, I did the set of um, the, the checklist things. So there's like um, refreshing OKRs and the um, Got it. bench plan and et cetera, et cetera. I think probably the, the useful thing to note is like roadmap in progress. And um, like, yeah. if you want to follow along, check out the, the Trello. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, OKRs have been updated. Like, we have a roadmap in progress. Now we have, like, two uh, test plans that uh, work uh, fully. One that tests the DHT and spawns a bunch of nodes and, like, uses the syncing service like, to like, get them to communicate. And we have the other one that, like, spawns um, Go IPFS as daemons. And so that, that is, like, super useful because, like, it really shows how to, like, just, like, get the basics, right? Like get the essentials, which is like getting IPFS there. And then like you, you can just call whatever you want from the API and like write your own test plan. Um, also related, like we will be putting more effort on like now that we have gone through this iteration and understand better how test ground works and like should work, uh, we'll be able to make more progress on like specifying the test plans. And so uh, it might happen soon that you might hear from me like thinking about like, hey, like is there a test plan that you want to see uh, written, do you have time to contribute to test round by writing a test plan? Can, can we make this useful for you today, right? And so um, still like some some things to tune up, like so as you just like heard from Jim, like you just got the two containers set up to work. We need to check in with Raul, or Raul like, uh, uh, has been like very busy with like all the events. And so let's make sure that like we, we didn't take the project like in a completely like <laughs> off track. But like I, 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 I believe like we are in the right track. We just want to make sure. Um, but But yeah, like, if you do have the time, the interest, the curiosity, like I heard from Burke on the previous meeting that he wants to use test ground to test food swap, um, like you are in luck because that's exactly the test plan that Jim is writing at the moment. So, uh, <laughs> so like Jim is really writing the test plan to check out like what food swap is doing. Um, and, and yeah, like another thing that you might find, and, and I, I'll credit to Jim here, this was his idea. Because like test ground as a Go SDK that like you just like import into the test and therefore you can like just plug into the, the whole text constructor. Uh, we want one in JS in the future so that we can like run also JS IPFS tests there. So Jim had this idea of just like compiling it to WebAssembly to take it to the work. So if you're interested on like touching in WebAssembly and if you want to give it a try to compile the Go SDK into WebAssembly and see if you can get like a, a test plan with JS IPFS, um, then that's like a very fun thing to do. Uh, and yeah, like uh, as Molly also pointed out, like we have this like Trello board, the Kanban, like um, the link is from the readme. Um, let me know if you don't have access to it, I can give you access. That's it. Questions, thoughts, right, yes. Thanks. Thank you, David. <laughs> no uh, <problem>. <laughs> in the other meeting, you shared a list of asks of some hot problems. Would you like mm -hmm. the core implementation implementators the people in this meeting to also uh, uh, review or look at those? Or? So uh, it's an open invite for sure. And I, I'm sure that like this group, most of like anyone else actually understands the open problems very well because you have not only developed the code, review the specs or what, what exists as specs. And I can also take part in many, many discussions. Uh, that said, like, I don't feel it such as like a, a, a top priority for this group because like so many things. Um, and, and so, yeah, like if you do have the time to spend, even if it's just like 10 minutes per over problem, there's seven total. So it will take you a little bit over an hour. Um, just like just glancing through, see if you learn something new, that might be the case. Um, or like see if you, there's like something that like you, it's missing there, that will you be, that will be super useful. But you can find these open problems on IPFS slash research and the peer to peer slash research. <laughs> Added to the tasks <laughs> section. Cool. Thank, uh, you. thank you. Okay, cool.
let us move on unless people have pressing questions. Awesome. Okay, so what have we got next? Subdomain gateway, Lido, things are on hold. Do you want to talk to this or shall we skip? I hear you not. How about now? Very, Very quiet. quiet. Oh man, very quiet. Um, just speak louder. But it's oh. working. Just shout. Oh man, no, no shouting. Um, but we can understand you. Go, go for it. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, subdomain gateways uh, are blocked by the lack of support for PIDs in Base32, and for that we need uh, to implement uh, PIDs as CIDs. Um, the tracking. I linked the tracking issue basically. Uh, I did not get to this, but I want to at least find some time this week and uh, uh, implement support uh, plus tests in a way that does not flip the switch of the default representation. But we, like, if someone passes uh, the peer ID as CID v1, it should just work because basically, like the LP2P internally cares only about the multi hash. Uh, so in that like backwards compatible way. Uh, as a migration path specified in RFC uh, number one for the P2P, uh, we should be able to move forward with this. Uh, and I'm publicly putting it there to shame myself if I don't deliver. That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Lido. Quick questions for Lido? No. Okay. Uh, moving on then to distributed signaling is still on hold pending async await refactor. Still the case? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, moving on then to IPNS and Aiden is out for holiday. Okay. So we will skip over that one as well, unless people want to say anything. I think Hugo has a thing. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Hugo, go. Uh, yeah, uh, this weekend uh, I've been in Berlin and uh, hackathon, talked with a bunch of people about a million things, uh, but also about IPNS over DNS. And at least one group uh, showed real interest. Uh, and they actually sh um, are quite knowledgeable and build stuff with IPFS, actual stuff. And we are really interested in, in this. Uh, and they want to, to be involved uh, to make this happen as fast as, uh, as we can. So, yeah, that's it. Gotcha, thank you. I like that we also get information about flights. Do we have a spec for IPNS over DNS? I know that there's a, this was implemented in JS IPFS and, and the aim for Q3 was to, to have that, but we, what's the latest status on that? I know that Dominic had built something in Go, but that we needed the spec in order to make sure that we were building the same thing across both languages, and then that kind of got blocked. Um, yeah, uh, it's basically my fault. Everyone is waiting on my spec, on me uh, writing the spec. Uh, I'm trying to finish the, my current tests, developer experience work, and then I go right into it and finish that up. Cool, thank you. Okay, so then moving on to migration of multi hash keys in block store. Um, the news uh, there is the um, the tool to migrate repos in JS IPFS. Um, the PR that implemented the initial thing um, got reviewed and merged, and there was some feedback that has been implemented in a separate PR. Um, and I'm just looking at that, or I was looking at that until I had to start these meetings. Uh, so that is imminently landing. Um, and then from there, we will have a, uh, a tool to be able to migrate the repo from one version to another. And that means we can unlock things like uh, changing the data store to use multi hashes instead of CIDs as keys. Um, I mentioned a little, a little bit last week about like the problem of um, IPFS refs API. And actually when that returns stuff, because we would be storing keys as multi hashes, we lose our IPLD codec. Um, and I forgot that um, we, I think there was a decision 
a few weeks or months back um, to just um, uh, to print out uh, IPLD raw blocks in that case because we just don't have the information anymore. Um, and so just so you know, that was the solution there. Um, but we can go, go ahead and, and change that. And that means that we ha no longer have to do the dual CID version lookup. Every time we want to get something out of our repo, we don't check version zero CIDs. And if it's not there, check version one CIDs. And if it's not there, it's definitely not there. Uh, and if it was there on, on either version, then it was there. So that's, that's the performance win. Uh, and, and it m gets us one step closer to CID base 32 by default. So that's happening. Any questions on that? Coolio and uh, no more. So I guess mount. Dominic, how's it going? You're here. I don't hear you. We'll skip over Dominic for now. <laughs> okay, we're running short on time anyway. So uh, there is a uh, there is an update in the notes anyway. Um, Dirk, you're here. Would you like to give us an update on your proof of concept? Have you been able to get any further? Is there anything anything more? Uh, so the latest is that I have all the tests passing in the proof of concept, and uh, <clears throat> um, and I've written a bunch of new tests for all the new code I've written. So. In terms of testing, I just need to add some tests for the engine part of the code, which I'll probably do today and tomorrow. Then I'm going to start running against test grounds uh, just to make sure that. So we've we've run uh, we've been benchmarking quite a lot against a kind of fast network case or, or a data center type use case, and we've been doing that in EC2. And so now I'm keen to try out uh, the work that Jim and David David have been doing uh, on test ground. Nice, that's very exciting. Da, da, da. Uh, cool, okay. So any questions for Dirk before we move on? His work should make BitSwap infinitely better, rounded down somewhat. Maybe twice as good. Three times as good? I don't know. Anyway, okay, next up. Um, Oh, okay. It's this one again. Uh, the async await refactor. Uh, Lib Peter P. Vashko and Jacob, would you like to give us a quick update? Yes. Uh, so we've got the Dyler upgrader. Uh, the initial part of that has been merged um, and hooked up to Lib P2P, so you can dial and stuff now using all the new stuff, which is great. Um, where am I? Here we are. Uh, we also added an interface for crypto this week. This weekend, we did not have an interface for it. Um, so now we do. So SecIO can migrate to that. And we'll also be doing a plain text too based off of that. We've also migrated all of the interface repos into a new JS interface repo. So all of the async refactor can just pull from there and we'll deprecate all of those, those old repos. So we just have one place for the interfaces. Um, and then we've got a slew of PubSub PRs out and ready for my eyes to look at. So I'll be reviewing those this week and giving Vashko feedback. And then Vashko's working on integrating that into the P2P. So hopefully we should have PubSub done this week. And then we're also working on migrating the uh, Peer Store over. I think that's mostly it. Oh, we're pausing on WebSocket Star for right now. Um, we'll probably pick that up back at the end, towards the end of the refactor. Um, but we may, since we're subset sunsetting the protocol, we may work on um, a different approach to get us the connectivity like circuit relay and then another uh, peer discovery system that we lose when we lose WebSocket Star. But we're postponing that now as a lower priority. Nice. I was saying in an earlier meeting that with Async Away, it feels like the beginning of the end and things have bubbled up significantly uh libp to be i think in the according to the issue there's something like eight uh eight repos that are in progress for async refactor i don't know how complete that is but there's nothing there's nothing more to start on they are they are all in flight uh, for ipfs there is i think we've bubbled everything up and and there's only like 
the IPFS main repo and the uh, HTTP client to get through. But I mean, these are significant modules in the in the uh, the refactor. But um, we finally kind of we're finally bubbling up to the top, which is super exciting. Yeah. It's been a long slog. So thank you everyone who has contributed because couldn't have done it without you. There's something like 67 repos. All right, okay, let's move on. Um, so, oh yeah, so the, the news I had was that um, I did make a start on this for, um, for JS IPFS and um, I did some work refactoring the uh, kind of boot logic. So when you first create a, a node um, uh, and so like we have distinct kind of states for initialized um, and started and stopped um, and what it does, it kind of uh, restricts the a the um, what APIs you can actually use at each given state. Rather than at the moment, we're just like I think there's a few APIs that actually check the state of the node before you um, you call them. But this what this PR does is it means that um, you just in it, when a node is in a particular state, you just won't be able to use this set of APIs. And there's no no need to kind of have the boilerplate in every single API for it checking. There's one place where which defines what what's available or not. So uh, if that makes it in, that will be a good, um, uh, a good, uh, good thing. And, uh, and there's a bunch of other um, benefits, but check out the PR that I put in the notes um, because I listed them out much more succinctly than I am saying right now uh, there. Um, it also adds uh, IPFS add in the new uh, kind of new API style as in using um, async, actually using async iterators as part of the API. So um, if you're interested in that, go and check out the PR. Um, uh, and yeah, there are a bunch of other new things. So Pedro, you said you, you put down your, yes, you've been working on inter interop and interface core tests. Um, and I have a mental note to get to that and review them. Um, so that's that. And I know that um, Alex has refactored the files API to use behind the scenes um, async await. Um, so that is also very good. Have I missed anything on that this week? People who have been working on it in IPFS land? Okay, rad. All right, um, cool. Okay, design review proposals. Doesn't look like there is anything that anyone's put down this week. On this last minute, okay. Uh, blockers and or asks. Someone has asked Dirk to have a look at a pull request. Yeah, sorry, I totally missed that one. Um, so, by the way, if I ever miss anything like that, feel free to ping me if it's been more than a day or something. Cool. Thank you, Dirk. Uh, and as we spoke about earlier, David's um, open problems have been pasted in there. Uh, it would be good to get the links as well. Uh, anyway, so questions, any quick questions? We are on time. I think my mic is working. Oh yeah, let's go back to Dominic. Of course, sure. let's I'll do be, it. I'll be brief. Um, so mainly I've just been iterating on feedback uh, with the pull request related to um, some of the mount stuff. Uh, mainly there's some ambiguities, like we have some flexibility as to how we can do some things in regards to our plugin API and like the actual protocol that we're using for the, the file operations and stuff. So things work right now, but they could work another way that may be better. So some of that stuff just has to be discussed um, and, and like written down so our users know what to expect. And we can actually write tests around it and stuff like that. Um, so that's been on my mind. And then I've also been doing a lot of upstream stuff uh, in regards to like portability, adding a lot of platform support and architecture support for some of the things that we depend on and writing and debugging tests so that I can go from saying it should work to it does work. And that's where I'm at. Nice, thank you. And sorry for not coming back to you. <laughs> okay, right, let's scroll down, look back again. Um, parking lot, um, I think we have no time for this right now, um, but if we can uh, talk about it when the, notes are pull requested to the repo that would be super good does that sound good to everyone okay cool all right it's been a long meeting i know i'm sorry um and that is the end of the 
docs uh sorry the doc the the notes um and weekly updates are there for async review cool we're done hooray um uh thank you for coming everyone it's been really nice to see your faces again um and i'll see you next week for another exciting round of ipfs core implementations um and and yeah we'll do a sync and all of that stuff bye bye bye, bye.